Hello, I'm Alex Jones, and I'm a radio and television host based in Austin, Texas. And for many years, I've been exposing the criminal activities of the global elite, also known as the New World Order. In past films, we've documented the centralization of power, the move towards world government, the attack on the nation state, self-defense, the Second Amendment, family values, that is, the family itself, as well as private property rights. But time and time again in my research, I come, well, eye to eye with something that's even hard for me to believe. And that's that the elite, again, the so-called establishment kings, uh, those that know best, the visions of the anointed ones, are obsessed with the occult, from presidents to governors to the heads of industry. We've all seen the stories of presidents and first ladies obsessed with their astrologers making national policy decisions upon their recommendations, spiritual guides, shamans in the White House. My friends, it gets far worse than that. Now, I personally am a Christian, but even an atheist should be concerned about the information we're about to bring forward in this new documentary film, The Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove. You see, for over 120 plus years in Northern California, in Sonoma County, on a 2,700 acre secluded redwood grove, leaders from around the world, prime ministers, chancellors, presidents, governors, again, the heads of industry, banking, academia, the media, Hollywood, only a select few, a little over 2,000 people, travel there to engage in bizarre ancient Canaanite, Luciferian, Babylon, mystery religion ceremonies. At least that was the rumors. And so I went to the library and got on the internet and saw many of the mainstream news articles admitting that world leaders do indeed go there and they fly into San Francisco uh, and other surrounding cities and drive out into the rural uh, hills and mountains of Northern California and that these stories have been coming out that they worship some 45-foot stone owl god. And then I began to uh, read some of the documentation on this Moloch character of the Old Testament, mentioned many times in Leviticus. That's in the Bible. Why are world leaders traveling to the middle of nowhere to worship this thing? Well, I had to check it out for myself. And I'm proud of my team, Mike Hansen, Violet Nichols. They traveled with me there. We talked to some of the locals discreetly. We successfully infiltrated with the help of some of the locals and Channel 4, World of Wonder, uh, British television that teamed up with us. And uh, I successfully infiltrated through the Secret Service, uh, through the guards, through the Sonoma County Sheriff's Department. 
We were inside four hours. That's only one day out of the two weeks that they meet there for the admitted summer fire festival of the Bohemian Club. Well, basically that's enough for me. Uh, it's, it's hard to even describe it with words. And I hope that our hidden cameras uh, can give you at least a small piece of what I witnessed. To have world leaders engaging in this type of sickening behavior. Oh yes, there's much more to come. Mock human sacrifices, they claim, just shocks the very foundations of what Americans believe their leaders to be. And then to have it intimately connected with world government. It doesn't make a lot of sense until you research history. All throughout history, spanning back into the midst of the beginnings of civilization, we see world leaders uh, from the empires of old, from the Aztec kings and priests, uh, to Babylonian leaders, to ancient Rome, engaging in twisted behavior. Could it be that when you have all the power and all the women and all the money and all the lands and all the art, you have to do something new. You have to go against the basic grain of humanity. You have to get off in a sick way. That's what we witnessed in Northern California, July 15th, 2000. Get ready to go inside the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Club, as it's known today, was founded in 1873 in San Francisco in Northern California. Many of the club's original annals, dating back to before the turn of the century, admit that local artists, writers, newspapermen, you name it, wanted a place away from the so-called backwardsness of the West Coast, the Judeo-Christian ethic. They found that place an hour and a half north of San Francisco, outside of the tiny town of Monterio. Their annals even admit an obsession with the occult and what they called druid rituals. Amongst the great redwood trees, they revived ancient ceremonies that in truth had their roots not in the druids, but in Babylon itself. As the railroads brought commerce, and larger and larger populations, the prestige of the club grew until, in the year 2000, it is a gathering place for the world establishment, the elite. We're about to show you some of the key evidence documenting this. It is absolutely central to understand that these bizarre activities have been engaged in going back to 1873 and are not some new fanciful whim of the trendies on the West Coast. By the turn of the century, there was already a 10- to 15-year waiting list. Presidents from Howard Taft to Herbert Hoover were on the membership roster. Not to mention, later, famous war general Dwight D. Eisenhower, later to become president. The roster of the Bohemian Club reads like a who's who of the elite. Look at this photo taken inside the Grove back in 1963. There you'll see Ronald Reagan. And sitting two people over from him, later to become president, Richard Milhouse Nixon. Frankly, we don't know if these men actively enjoy the things that go on inside the Bohemian Club. But one thing is perfectly certain from the evidence. They are forced to go and attend and take part in these activities if they wish to be elevated to the highest levels of the geopolitical power structure. Take George Bush Sr., documented member. And then, of course, there's his son, now, the last four generations of Bushes have also attended the Skull and Bone Society at Yale, well known to be steeped in the occult. Then there's Bill Clinton, a frequent attendee. Upon closer inspection, the entire federal government at the highest levels is infested with Bohemian Club members. And it doesn't stop there. America's private run-for-profit Federal Reserve Bank from its very inception in 1913, has been run by prominent members of the Bohemian Club. Central Bank Chairman Alan Greenspan was seen leaving the Bohemian Grove only one month before he was appointed Chairman of the Federal Reserve. He had to be a made man, to be a member of the most powerful cabal on the planet. Historical records are clear for major universities. The Manhattan Project was planned and instituted and run from the Bohemian Club. 
all of this going on in an atmosphere of bizarre revelry. You're looking at an illustration from a November 1989 issue of Spy Magazine. Spy goes undercover with Henry Kissinger, Merv Griffin, and William F. Buckley Jr. The story was clearly a shill meant to misdirect the intensifying media coverage that the Grove was getting in the late 1980s. The writer's spin is obvious. They're just masters of the universe, big frat boys blowing off steam. We'll get back to this article later. Because you can clearly see that the mantra in the spin story has been picked up as a front by all the local media. Sure, they're elitist. Sure, they have some bizarre rituals. But what's the big deal? They're just having fun. If that was the case, why would David Gergen, presidential advisor to President Clinton, resign from the Bohemian Club and 17 other organizations when it was revealed in 1993? Organizations like the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group. But it's not just the Washington Times and the Sacramento Bee. You're looking at an illustration from the pages of Parade Magazine, February 22, 1981. This story was the most accurate and revealing, detailing the so-called mock human sacrifice. Former German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt wrote extensively in his memoirs, Men and Powers, a political retrospective, goes into great detail about the secret establishment running the world, the Trilateral Commission, the CFR, the Bilderberg Group, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, the Bohemian Grove, a place that he often talked about being a, well, a wonderful hideaway, a place to spend time with Nelson and David Rockefeller and to talk about world government and steering societies. On page 225 of Men in Powers, he talks about it being one of the most astounding places he had ever visited in the United States and how that feeling intensified over the years with subsequent visits. The book goes on for page after page discussing the corporate, private, governmental infrastructure of world government. Going back to the Spy Magazine spin piece, they have lots of rosy illustrations of drunken establishment types dancing around having fun with the rituals going on in the background. They even admit that they wear bizarre Ku Klux Klan style robes. And there's even a photo released by the Grove of the ritual being engaged in. They talk about the incredible security surrounding the Grove. And they even admit that a corpse, a sacrifice, is born across the lake. But it's all in good fun. We did massive research on the occult. And one of the libraries we visited was that of Professor Tex Mars of Aeronautics. He also has written literally dozens of books on the occult. His library was very revealing about the obsession of elitists throughout history with the occult. Uh, front group after front group to conceal and, and really subvert. Uh, but behind all of these groups, there is a small uh, cadre or uh, elite, a core. And what you have done, I think, with uh, the Bohemian Grove is you have exposed one of the premier organizations of the whole New World Order uh, arrangement, you might say. Uh, of course, we can go back in history, all the way back to ancient Egypt, Babylon, or Greece, Rome. And I think you're going to see sort of the roots of the uh, Bohemian Grove, but particularly in the Illuminati uh, era, uh, originating during the French Revolutionary days. You know, there we had the actual order of the Illuminati with Adam Weishaupt and all of his uh, evil uh, philosophers, let's just call them, uh, Voltaire and the others. And uh, that has come up all the way to today. Hitler, of course, was a bohemian. I think it's more Babylon mystery religion. Uh, all of the elements are, are there. Uh, of course, even the owl is a symbol of ancient mystery Babylon. Uh, the owl was worshipped uh, by the uh, ancient Egyptians and by the Babylonians. Uh, and it's interesting to me uh, that many of the members of the Bohemian Grove have in their homes, as I understand it, small figurines of owls. And I believe they actually worship those owls as a symbol of the deity, the great goddess uh, of Babylon. And, of course, here again we have the counterfeit of Christ's sacrifice 
uh, on the cross. I think all of those things, there, there had to be, in my belief, a, an occultist, a deep occultist, who designed each of the elements of this ceremony. It wasn't just a bunch of guys sit together at a bar and said, hey, let's have a good time, the cremation of care, uh, and why don't we do this or that. I believe it was purposely designed, each element in its turn, uh, for, for what they did. No doubt about it. After landing in San Francisco at the International Airport, we traveled through the city, across the Golden Gate Bridge, into deeper Northern California. Northern California, home to the giant Sequoia Redwoods. From there north to Santa Rosa, going west on Highway 12, the gateway to Bohemian Grove. We spent the first night in Santa Rosa before getting up early in the morning and traveling into the town of Occidental where we were going to meet the British media and start our investigation. Well, here we are in Northern California, right outside the Bohemian Grove. Mmm. The fruits of nature. But I'll tell you this, I don't worship it and sacrifice things to it. Let's go find out what's going on. Yeah. Well, here we are, folks, turning on to the Bohemian Highway and Bohemian Grove. We're going to find out what in the New World Order is going on here. <laughs> Thank you, Park. No, I tell you, it was. <laughs> It's beautiful out here during the day, but it is spooky at night. I don't know if you guys got some footage of it, all the all the fog and the rest of it. I tell you, are you excited? Oh yeah. I've got a map. You guys want to look at that? My question is, what the history? What do they do that catch you in there? They have us killed. I doubt that. Skin <laughs> alive. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't. Hang upside down redwood tree. <laughs> I doubt that. Yeah, we'll see. No, I think they'll just check this out. What about me? Because I'm a woman. I can't really sneak in, can I? I mean, you I, can't I, go I can. You've got to stay. I've got to stay? Yeah. I've got to stay behind in the spooky Occidental Lodge. <laughs> I have no problem. There is a road. I can be shown a way to insert myself into this with Hanson. But then I know where the cremation of care, what day they're supposed to do it, where this pond is. Tomorrow night at dusk. I'm not going to end up tied down on a pentagram with, with uh, Henry Kissinger's fat belly hanging over while he's naked with a big dagger, am I? <laughs> I just want to make sure that's a joke. That is the thought. It's very... <laughs> well, like Governor, Bush, Governor Bush running around in a pink tutu foaming at the mouth with a purple wig on, am I? Uh, no, <laughs> supposedly I hear that's what they do. So <coughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think they, I think they do do these things, but the question is why. And um, these power brokers, which bomb innocent countries and slaughter people and you know pump the food chain full of garbage and just everything else they do, it's and probably something fun for them. And they really get off on being bad little boys and rule the world. I mean, this is for some for some people this is the secret room. Well, I mean, certainly in the whole class system, it, it's the pleasures of class. And now what class is, the power that you have is something different. And to me, I mean, from my research of Bohemian Grove, and you guys have obviously done more, I've read a lot of mainstream articles, alternative, talked to people, talked to some guests. It's really where people go in there to do whatever they want to do. So there are probably people sitting around fishing and probably people sitting around doing something completely different. 
Okay, there's the stage. Right, that's where the talks happen. Because they've got this amphitheatre. Amphitheatre. And, um, and they have these kind of talks, and this is where George Bush gives talks, and people like that, on this, on this stage. Oh, look, there's the lake. There you go. Lakeside Talks. There's the lake. There's the shrine. See? Mm -hmm. Right there. That's where. Honey, come get a shot of this. Now, where's this river? This is near the Russian River. Can you see it? Now see here's the here's the shrine of the of the of their devil owl, um, which they even admit has its roots in like Babylon and the Druids had them and everything else. So all over the world, this this weird owl shows up. Some cultures they've thrown children inside this inside the bowels of this burning owl. Um, that's historical. We've all read in the Bible about throwing your children to, to idols uh, inside their you know. So I, it's weird behavior, definitely, so it needs to be investigated. And plus, it gets the adrenaline out. Thrill seekers have to have more. But uh, here you go, honey. Right here at the shrine. You can zoom in on that, Mike. I'm saying honey to my girlfriend, Violet, not, <laughs> not Mike here. <laughs> We're getting real bohemian now, aren't we? Uh, this is... Uh... Honey, we can get a close shot right here. But it did sound like that she's definitely leftward leaning. Then we get into the whole semantical debate about is there a left and a right, and to me there really isn't. There's the command and control on one end and the anarchy on the other, and I want to be on the middle of the real spectrum. Certainly got to have some control in a, in a complex society and civilization. <clears throat> but um, all, the, all the developments I see are pretty bad uh, towards, towards dehumanization. And now you've got the UN demanding everybody sign on to this international criminal court. Um, and they're telling the U.S. if we don't sign on, it won't matter. If 60 countries ratify, we'll be under its control. I mean, we're here. We're at global government now. Uh, when they're saying they're going to have some world court in the Netherlands that they'll take anybody they want to, to. Um, these are the, in fact, I was reading some of the talks that, that they've given and they've released that the Bohemian Grove has discussed, and it's all population control, world courts. You're talking 20 years ago. So definitely some stuff's going on here that's pretty important. But is it the ultimate um, um, elitist retreat? I would imagine those we, we don't even know the names of. This is probably just one more steering committee where they bring in a lot of underlings and high-level corporate chieftains that really aren't the upper top echelon, make them feel important, and then implement some type of strategy. There, from the stories I've read and things that happen, I mean, it is pretty well documented that people run around naked, they, ha they have orgies, they go into town and have orgies, and these are world leaders. I got a serious problem with that. It, it, just by the very nature of how this, to me, Bohemian Grove is probably a way to compromise people. You want to be in the New World Order Club, uh, it's like a big kid fraternity. And just like in fraternities, you have to do weird things. Here, you probably do weird things. But I got a problem with governors and presidents and prime ministers and corporate chieftains running around and doing this uh, when they have uh, so much power over what happens in the public domain. Uh, they have a responsibility uh, to, to, to disclose what they're doing. So I think it is important, like you were saying, to somehow try to maintain some security and not be way out in the open uh, because they'll call in a bunch of security. I hear, like he often is. I hear he really enjoys himself here. <laughs> I think Henry Kissinger will be here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if I got a stink detector, we'll be able to find out where he's at. He's... Oh, it's like everything evil you can imagine, Kissinger's always involved in it. Isn't he a Republican, though? I'm not a Republican. That's the point I keep making. This whole Democrat-Republican deal is a complete... People always go back to that, though. Probably like in your country, you've got Labor and you've got the Tories over there, and it's all the same people behind closed doors. It's just a big joke. And your, your, your leadership, our leadership, it's all the same people. I mean, it, it's a... You do see a fight going on, but it's two different management teams of the same system, you know, bidding for control. What I call them, the CEO jobs of Slavery Incorporated. Do you worry for Alex, Violet? Um, I do. I just, uh, because Alex gets so impassioned by what he's doing that sometimes I'm afraid that he might be a little bit, you know, reckless or... Uh, maybe a little bit too fearless. Um, I worry about Alex when he drives down the street to come home. You know, especially I used to worry about him when he had a, uh, you know, come home every night from the same, you know, radio studio at the same time in the same car. 
Um, and, you know, I worry about him sometimes when he's late getting back in the studio and he doesn't give me a call. I mean, you know, he is putting himself out there, but I think the fact that he's in the public eye as much as, it, as he is really, you know, keeps him safe to a certain degree. So maybe something like this is, yeah, well, you know, um, people might not necessarily know where he is right now, you know, people that listen to the radio or whatever, so it's maybe a little bit more whiskey and it's a little creepy at night up here in the woods, you know. And you're definitely not dangerous. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do anything stupid this weekend. Well, uh, I mean, dangerous to what? Dangerous to myself? Are these people dangerous? They certainly may be, but I'm, I'm completely nonviolent when it comes to just going out there and trying to get the information. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, I'm an activist first and foremost, but also a journalist uh, in that uh, I'll make some jokes and speculate occasionally because I'm a radio talk show host. But when I say something that I believe, I have to be uh, on target about it. But uh, dangerous? I'm definitely dangerous to corrupt bureaucrats and their financial bosses uh, that would like to control the American people on the planet. But not in a violent way. Not in a violent way. And long before global government came out in the open in the last four or five years, uh, they were conditioning the public that anyone that talks about global government is a kook, a weirdo, a terrorist, a racist. And now they're out on the nightly news saying, global government's here, you better accept it, we're getting rid of juries, um, all across the planet, uh, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, basically runs things now, the WTO decides what you can buy and sell and trade on the international market. But see, they've preconditioned us that it doesn't exist. They've preconditioned us that Anybody that talks about this stuff and who is against it is a kook or a racist because it doesn't exist. And then everybody's decided, well, I'm going to be culturally cool. I want to be in style. I want to be accepted. So even when they're hearing the news admit it and tell us how great it is, they've already pre-positioned it psychologically that it's not acceptable. It's not kosher to discuss it. Do you see the, the tactic they're using there? Mm -hmm. Five years ago, I would laugh when I heard about black helicopters. I would say, I'm about taxes. I'm about corruption. I'm about... You know, getting local control back. I'm about states' rights. You know, everything's going, coming under federal control. I was pretty mainstream, what you'd call so-called conservative. Then I saw the light with black helicopters started going into North Carolina. I started going into Florida. They fired into an all-night restaurant in Miami, just training, firing bullets into a place where people were eating. Uh, they started burning buildings. Police chiefs started throwing them out of their town, San Antonio. All this started happening. And I said, whoa, this is real. And then I realized that I was preconditioned, even as a so-called conservative uh, person who, was, who understood that the media lied, I didn't realize how thick the propaganda was. That they preconditioned us before they released something on us that it, number one, doesn't exist in our minds with classic doublethink, but then it can re-exist at the same time. If they say it does, and it's good. So it's, it's literally George Orwell's doublethink. And, and one has to have it to stay sane in this world. Well, I refuse to be a part of it. I mean, the news every day, black helicopters are a joke. They're stupid. The culture, commercials, movies. At the same time, almost every month in this country, they're attacking and terrorizing some town with burning buildings and terror. And I don't want to be part of their sick control freak system. I don't like these degenerate, inbred, uh, New World Order crowd people. They're not going to run my life. They're not going to control me. And I'm going to try to expose them. And I think we've had some success doing that. Oh, look how pretty it is. Uh-huh, sure is pretty. Mike, you enjoying yourself? Yeah. A lot, a lot uh, less spooky during the daytime. It's all foggy. Yeah, we're going to take our British friends uh, down into the forest uh, a little bit later tonight. Let them gallivant in the werewolf-ridden woods. Joking, of course. <laughs> They'll have me on there. Alex Jones, radio talk show host, believes werewolves infest Northern California. <laughs> They've been seen dancing with grizzly bears. Small pixies have even witnessed playing violin for George Bush. Don't know what to make of uh, what's going to happen. I can't even begin to imagine what we're going to discover when I infiltrate tomorrow and try to get the uh, cremation of care. We're very close to the gateway to Bohemian Grove now. The first set of uh, gates security. They have a small guard check at the front and then they have a larger second one. Not a through road. Get a shot of that. Uh, there's a guard gate right over there. A small guard gate and then back further, an even more elaborate guard gate with surveillance cameras, you name it. 
not a through road, ladies and gentlemen, right up here in Northern California. How you doing, sir? Okay. You can't make her? Yeah. Oh. I'm Alex Jones. I make documentaries. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh... What do you think about Bohemian Grove? I used to work there. You used to work there? Yeah. And now you work at Camp Meeker? No, I don't work. Yeah, I live in Camp Meeker. Oh, you live there? Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, did you ever watch The Cremation of Care? Um, no. No. What'd you do at the... I just I just worked there. But, I mean, yeah. you, you never saw him march around in the red robes? And no, march? no. Oh, really? That doesn't go on. Know, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay. Thanks. What have you guys heard about Bohemian Grove? Oh, I don't know. A bunch of rich people, right? Have you ever heard about the 40-foot stone owl and the mock human sacrifice? I uh, heard about it a little bit, yeah. Roll that window Not down. Yet. We're going to talk to you. Hold on. What's going around here? I don't know. Oh, yeah? So what have you heard about the... Oh, I just read stuff about it in the paper. I don't know. Some people don't like it. They protested or something weird. But what about the 40-foot stone owl and the mock human sacrifice? You say you heard something about that? Well, just what I read about in the paper. Oh, the paper admitted that. Well, no, I don't know if they admitted it. They just said people go protest it. It supposedly happens. Sounds kind of weird. Does sound weird to me. Yeah. Why you guys? What are you guys? What are you guys doing? This TV show or something? We're just having fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> this town isn't like Children of the Corn or anything, is it? Oh no, nothing like that. I'm sure. I don't know. Though. Supposedly, lots of people go there. Some kind of weird event. I don't know. You guys know anything about it? You don't know. Huh? What would you say if we told you that they sacrificed a human in effigy and mock to a 40-foot stone owl in black and red and silver cloaks? Sounds kind of different. Do you think it's good to have... Bull talks down. <laughs> do you think it's good to have so-called so world leaders secretly engaging in pagan activities? Uh, I can't say it's that great, no. Why would you have a problem with that? Well, I don't know. It could be all right. Depends how you look at it. The kind of relativist worldview, huh? Yeah. Got to sacrifice care to the winds, huh? Yeah. I don't know. Could just be for fun, or they could really be weird. They run around naked. Run freak around out. naked and freak out. There you go. Have you heard that? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, to tell you the truth, here's a funny story. What about you? Okay, go ahead. No, 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 this is the truth. A couple years ago, I was down the road, <laughs> just down Yar, past Camp Meeker, and I was stopped with a friend of mine. Now, Camp Meeker's right outside the Bohemian Grove. <coughs> That's an affirmative. Yes. And we were, uh, we were down the road, and uh, we, had, we, had, we were stopped there uh, because we were just having a cigarette, hanging out, um, taking a break, and uh, some Secret Service men actually pulled up behind us and asked us what we were doing while we were there. It was true. And they were like, what, what are you guys doing? Where are you at? Why are you parked here? What's going on? and asked us a whole bunch of questions. Oh, what our names were, who we were affiliated with, where we lived, all kinds of stuff. Sort of interrogated us. Did you answer their questions? Totally. I don't know, we always hear there's like big, fat, rich guys with prostitutes there. Really? Yeah. What, what about I'm... the what about the owl and the rituals? Uh, I don't know anything about it. Never heard about the rituals? Rituals. Uh, Ritual nothing. killing of a human sacrifice of a human? Nope. Never heard what of it. What would you think if that was going on? I think it was pretty weird. Wouldn't be that surprised. I mean, it is our government after all. Hey, thanks for talking to us, bud. Yo. Hey, I like your shirt. Declaration of Independence. Yeah. All right, man. Take care. <laughs> all right. We're talking about the Bohemian Grove and trying to see what locals think about it and how it's all secret and all these fat cats there and the supposed strange rituals that go on. Are you a local? No, but she is. What do you think about the Bohemian Grove? Uh, well, um, I don't know what they call it. See, um, it, it offers a lot of employment. It offers a lot of employment? Mm -hmm. What's going on there? What kind of rituals do they do there? I don't know. We're talking to locals about what the rumors are. What are the rumors? About a big 40-foot stone owl and simulated human sacrifice. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, but 
there it's it's politicians that come that uh, that vacation there. And It'd be really weird if politicians right? were were acting like they were sacrificing people, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. No, you can tr you can't trust politicians, you know. Oh, really? They might be doing it, huh? Oh, they might, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> the politicians, you know. I hear you, bud. Hey, good talking to you. <laughs> right. Appreciate it. You guys take care. Good luck. Hey, those, are those are some pretty flowers. Yeah, those are sweet peas. Those are real, folks. Yeah, they're wow, real. <laughs> you guys have a good, good one. You too. Yeah? Yeah, I'm this area is in trouble. Yeah, we are. We it's are. in big trouble. No, this is a wonderful area of the country. We're just asking locals uh, what they think of the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Grove is a wonderful place. Have you been there? Yeah, I've been in there a bunch of times. What, did you do, work there? Or Worked there, yeah. Yeah. Is you know when it's no, the most wonderful time? Mm. Is when nobody's there. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful area? Yeah. Yeah, very beautiful. Uh, it's got big trees. Have you ever been there for the cremation but of care? No. So you've never been there for the rituals? No. You ever heard about them? Yes. What have you heard they do, sir? Nothing. they got that tree that looks like an owl. Tree that looks like an owl? Tree or rock. Or it's, it's a carving or... It's where the stage is. But have you heard what they do during that? During that? No, I have no idea what they do. During what would that. you say if we told you they, they burn a human being in effigy? They don't really do it. They burn it in effigy. For, I don't know what that means. Well, they have like a dummy that looks like a person under a black blanket. Huh? They take it up there and burn it. Oh, I don't know. Pretty weird. Huh? Pretty weird. Yeah, I've never seen that. How long you lived around here? Uh, I don't know. I'm, how old am I? 20, 20. 40 years. Yeah. Really? Oh, your whole life? Yes. What's your name, sir? My name is Raul. The lizards? Yeah, this is Vital Roots. How long has Vital Roots been here? A couple years. A couple years? Yeah. The Bohemian Grove? Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of politicians, a lot of big wigs making a lot of big decisions. Oh, really? Do you think it's good that they get together in secret and make all these so-called decisions? Do I think it's good? Yeah. No, of course not. Do you? What about the rituals? Have you heard anything about the rituals that go on? Oh. There? oh there's all kinds of rumors about rituals that go on there. What type of uh, rumors have you heard? I don't, don't make me go there. Please. Come on. We're trying to talk to some locals. I'm just uh -huh. wondering. It's interesting. Well, I, I really don't know that much about it. You know, I've just what I've read in books. There's books out about it. Oh, you've read I, books on it, huh? I had a book that was published in 1956 that was written about some of the rituals. Because now it's been going on for 120 plus yeah. years. Yeah. I think they said they just had their 120th something anniversary. Yeah. What would you say if I told you that there's a 40 foot stone owl and that they burn a human being in effigy, not in real life, but in I would, effigy? I wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it? Nah. I think it's a bunch of garbage. So you doubt there's a stone owl and you doubt that they... Well, I wouldn't doubt there's a stone owl. Maybe there's a stone owl, but I wouldn't think that that's kind of... You know, rumors just... It's rumors. You know, what the, rumor, the word implies, pretty much. Just a conspiracy. Yeah, it's just a bunch of hearsay. Pure conspiracy theory. Yeah, whatever. Um, what have you heard about the Bohemian Grove? It's where um, all of the, like... FBI and um, you're talking about the Bohemian yeah. Grove. Yeah, um, it's like the uh, um, quote unquote elite and uh, presidential retreat. Have you heard about the rituals that go on there? No, I haven't. Uh, well, the, uh, the people who have more money than the rest of us in the world are um, a bit different. They're stingy. They want to hoard it all for themselves. And they think they're gonna go to heaven they're not because they don't know how to provide or do as Jesus told them to. What would you say if I told you that they sacrifice a human in effigy before a giant 45 to 50 foot stone owl? I would say that's probably why they're going to hell. This Australian we met yesterday, he's been here for three years, and he says that about two, three months ago, the whole you know place was saturated with men in black, because FBI, Secret Service, and everything going up and down the roads, checking everything, checking houses, everything for bombs and stuff, and then they all disappeared, and they were looking out for undesirables in the area who were persuaded to go. That was his story. And now we're going to talk to him. And now, and now we're going to infiltrate. Um, 
I think we should go and see what we can see. The, the public has a right to know. They do. The public may have, asked, may have a right to know, but the people in this cafe, I think, shouldn't, shouldn't know. I agree. <laughs> well, you've got to go in up the, the road that says no through road, because we've got to sit in the car and get a shot of you going up the road. So you've got to go in. You've got to be the guinea pig. But you're a brave man, Alex, aren't you? Yeah, so, no so. problem, yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't ask a man who wasn't as brave as you. All oh, right, it's no big deal. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna go in and uh, make sure everything goes good. Mm -hmm. My only concern is figuring out the right type of baggage to carry this in. I'll show a still shot cam. Well, I personally would recommend that you um, wired yourself up with your. Um, with your, um, what's it called? Hidden camera. Yeah, your hidden camera that, that's in the shape of a pager. Problem is, we got some stuff on last night, we checked it out, but it's very unwieldy, not trustworthy. Right. If I can just get in the woods with this, it's over. Mm, that's true. And even if I, see, that, I, I'm going early now. I'm probably going about 3.30 with Mike, and we'll just hang out inside. In case they throw me out, I'm, I'm still getting back in the property. Oh, so you're gonna, you're gonna go in way before Rick gets here? Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, cool. Well, we'll just sit in the car. But, but I mean, you, you understand why? Not because I want to hang out in there all day. It's because I've got to get in. Because if they catch me, then I'm gonna got to sneak back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will not be stopped. <laughs> you know, I went to um, I went with uh, Big Jim Tucker from the Spotlight to uh, the Bilderberg meeting last year. But that was my first time, and we we got chased away by men in men in dark glasses. And you know, I was a bit scared then. But I feel safe with you, Alex. <laughs> Well, Tucker's a good rider. Oh, yeah, I like Tucker. It was the night of July 15th, 2000. Mike Hansen and I were about to attempt the first ever successful infiltration of the Bohemian Grove. Others have tried and failed. No one has ever actually made it in.